Okay, it is just a few minutes after three o'clock here on Tuesday. So we're gonna go ahead and start our sheep showmanship animal science session. My name is Jenny Clark. I am the marketing and communications specialist for Indiana 4-H and Purdue Extension. Uh, I'm joined today by Anna Williams. She is the 4-H educator in Jasper County and she's going to be talking with us about sheep showmanship today. Uh, Anna brings to us her knowledge from going, growing up in her family's sheep farm, her personal 4-H career, and her experience of being a 4-H educator in Indiana. So Anna, take it away. All right, thanks Jenny, and thank you all who decided to join us this afternoon. Um, I'm excited to kind of share with you all some basic knowledge that I have um, accumulated and learned throughout my career showing sheep um, and through my family's <laughs> guidance as well, because we all have family members that like to give us guidance, right, um, about showing sheep. Um, so we're doing some sheep showmanship basics today. Um, I don't expect everybody that's on this call to be on the same level of showing. Some might not have as much experience showing and some might have shown for a few more years. Um, so we're gonna really kind of cover the basics today. Um, sheep are a unique species in my mind. I'm biased towards them. I really love sheep and I enjoy showing them. They're one of my favorite 4-H projects. But if you have sheep, you probably know that sometimes they don't always like to cooperate with us <laughs> in the best way. And it's due to the nature of um, sheep and the, due to the nature of how um, they are shown too. So my bias is if you can show sheep, you can probably show almost any other species, <laughs> but that's my bias coming in here. So we have some sheep showmanship basics we're gonna talk about today. Um, so what are some of our objectives objectives for this afternoon. So you're going to first we're going to talk about you know what is our proper 4-H member attire and the presentation of your sheep um, really quickly kind of going over that. What do you expect in the show ring and learning just again the basics of sheep showmanship. And Anna, I'm going to jump in and remind people that if they have questions, just go ahead and place them in the chat box. You'll find that um, either at the bottom or the top of your screen, depending on if you're on a computer or your phone. Um, those questions will go to me and I'll just jump in and ask Anna as we go. If your county is collecting names on per for participation purposes, uh, we'll have a link at the end where you can enter your name so that you get to be on our list. Perfect. Okay. So let's just talk about just basics of showmanship in general. Um, and this doesn't apply only to um, sheep, it's across the board. So you always, number one, you really need to keep that animal between you and the judge. And you'll see that when we show some pictures and some videos. Um, the goal is always having that animal in the forefront. You're showing off that animal, right? So you wanna keep that animal between you and the judge. Please make sure you're paying attention to the judge and the ring help. Um, sometimes shows are longer or shorter. Um, you might be in the ring a little bit longer than normal, but make sure you're always paying attention to that judge. They're moving around the ring um, and they, you need to make sure you know where they are at all times so you have your lamp set up correctly. And also the ring help. They're going to guide you where you need to go. Um, you need to have some knowledge of that beforehand, but you need to make sure you're paying attention to them. Of course, you need to be a good sport. Um, to your fellow showmen. So that can include a variety of topics. Um, and it's sheep specifically, you know, if you have a lamb in front of you that just doesn't want to walk out that day, um, you know, being a good sport and helping them out, um, getting them to go forward. Um, properly preparing yourself and the animal for the show ring, we'll go into that a little bit. And then knowing the procedures of the show and the ring before you enter the ring. So if you're not in one of the first two classes, I highly encourage you to watch at least the first couple of classes. Get to know what is expected of you in that show ring um, and what is kind of the guidelines that you're going to go through. If you're in the first couple of classes, um, again, going back to that paying attention to that judge and the ring help, first couple of classes is where they kind of figure out what's going to be the flow of the show. So you need to make sure you're trying to watch that as well. And if you've never shown before, I suggest that you attend um, a show maybe that you're not exhibiting at and kind of watch and see what um, the flow of the show could be um, and what some other showmen might do. And you can kind of pick up some tips and tricks from them as well. So we're going to go into sheep showmanship and appropriate attire. So on this slide, I have some of my nieces and nephews that are Surprise showing, it's in the blood, right? Um, so they are modeling for us at one of the shows they attended this past um, summer, some appropriate attire. 
um, that they're wearing. So you want to make sure you're av avoiding too loose or flowing tops and shirts. Um, our sheep, they like to nibble a little bit. So sometimes if you're wearing too flowy of tops or shirts, um, they might want to kind of chew on you a little bit, um, and then that kind of gets uh, distracting. Or if you have too like flowy of a shirt, it might um, kind of startle them or scare them a little bit if they see something in front of them. Um, so just avoid that. Long jeans are um, very much suggested. Um, I wouldn't wear any type of a light khaki or a light type of jean, light wash jean. It just shows up dirt and grime and that type of thing. So long jeans are expected. Um, they can be colored jeans if you want to. Um, there's not really um, any type of formal thing that says you have to wear a dark wash jean. Of course, sturdy close-toed shoes. Um, if you don't want you to get stepped on, right, that kind of hurts your toes. So make sure you got sturdy closed toed shoes on that they're comfortable for you to wear and move around the ring in. And just a general clean and put together appearance, um, making sure that the clothes that you have on are clean, they're not ripped, dirty, have holes in them. Um, if you might have longer hair, please hold that back in whatever way you would like to so that it is not distracting you or anything or, or your lamb or anything else. So make sure that you pull um, your hair back in whatever fashion that you you so choose. Okay. So let's um, a sheep appearance that could be its own separate webinar. So I'm just going to really quick highlight um, what we kind of expect in showmanship because the appearance of the lambs does have an effect. Uh, make sure that they're either slick sheared or they're fitted to their breed characteristics. And we have quite a few breeds in sheep. And so some of our breeds are more um, geared towards our wool, um, wool producing sheep. Um, so you can kind of see in these couple pictures that I have, you have an example of slick sheared sheep and ewe lambs, um, but you also have in your top right corner, that's a natural colored ewe. Um, she was fitted out and the top left is, or bottom left is your Oxford ewe that was fitted out. So make sure you know your breed characteristics and what your lamb is really supposed to be exhibiting. Make sure they're washed clean and dry. It should go without saying, but um, make sure that they are a clean animal and they're dry. You don't want to bring in a lamb that um, is wet because the judge will feel that lamb and they don't want to, they don't really want to get their hand all wet. And then again, um, brushed out, no shavings or beddings um, left on their legs. If you have a lot of leg wool, make sure you brush that out. Um, so again, seems like common sense, but something that we need to be paying attention to and making sure that our, our sheep has a good clean appearance and it is fitted to this breed um, characteristics. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about a show ring, maybe a tip, what a typical show ring might look like. So you will have, of course, a makeup ring or area that you're going to bring your lamb to first. And then if you see that top, um, this dotted line right here, that um, signifies this is going to be the first look that your um, judge is going to have of your lamb because you're walking your lamb in. Um, usually um, it's kind of at a moderate pace, and we'll kind of look at that a little bit. Um, and then you're going to line them up and look for your ring help. It's gonna, they're going to tell you if you're in the front um, where to start um, lining them up. Um, the tail usually um, faces the judge because you're going to um, line them up in a rear view at the very first um, when you're setting them up. So those arrows signify to me some sheep. So you want to make sure that they are all in a line. You're lining them up right with the first sheep here. Um, you don't want to have somebody down here, somebody up here, somebody down here, okay? You want to make it easy for the judge to get a good look at um, all of the sheep as a whole. Um, also watch your spacing. So you don't want to get right up next to the next sheep um, on the on the line here. Oops. Oops, there we go. You don't want to get up right next to this other sheep, but you want to allow some spacing for, for yourself to work on your lamb. So watch that as well. So most of the time, once you come in and you line up um, for the rear view, the judge is going to usually wait for everybody to come in um, and then they're going to come and they're going to get your initial touch and feel on the lamb. Typically they start with whoever came in first. Each judge is different. <laughs> you just have to be ready for whatever they choose to do. Once they go through that line, a lot of times they're going to come around and they're going to look through the front view of, for the front view of that lamb. And we're going to go through some pictures and videos of that as well. Once they have done that, um, we want to see those lambs walking out. They want to um, kind of evaluate for them for their structure. Um, so they're going to want to see those lambs walking. 
So that's kind of what that line right here kind of signifies. Each judge is different. Each show ring is different. You might have a big enough show ring where the judge only wants to see that kind of just a C-shaped walkout, and then they can line up on the side view here, and that's all that they wanted. Some have you go around the ring, and maybe you're lining up over here. Again, just depends on the show, depends on the judge. Make sure you're paying attention and watching maybe the first few classes to see how it will be done. And then, so you're gonna have your side view after you walk the lamb out. Um, and from there, the judge is going to place the class. So that's a really basic um, kind of breakdown of what a show ring might look like. Um, so if you have any questions on that, please make sure you put them in the chat box. Uh, but again, I really recommend if you've never shown before to try to get to a show to kind of see what the steps are involved in a typical show. And again, if you're not in the first few classes, make sure you're there watching the show as it goes on so you have a good idea of what the flow is going to be. Okay. So some tips for training your sheep. So sheep need daily attention, not just for watering and feeding, um, but to be able to train them so that they know what to expect and they work well for you in the show ring, you really need to start walking them daily um, with a rope halter or whatever halter you choose to use. And also practice leading them without a halter by the head, okay? So that's really important for when you're walking into the ring and you're walking around the show ring, um, that really will help with that as well. But really you need to walk, get them halter broke if you haven't already, um, walking them daily with a halter. Utilize a rack. You can see in the bottom right hand corner we have a five headed rack right down there. Um, a rack to get them comfortable and used to standing still with their heads up. Um, if you don't have a rack, you can use a pin and tie them up to the gate, but make sure that their heads are up um, and that it really helps them learn how to just kind of stand still with their heads up um, that really does help in the show ring. Again, some shows last longer than others, some are shorter, um, but you need to get them comfortable with the standing in that position. And you really need to do on a daily basis, again, practice setting them up. A tip is to start by first setting them up in their pins. Um, they might be more comfortable if they are in an environment they're used to, um, and they might have some other sheep around them. If you wanna first start that way, if you haven't started yet, um, you can start by setting them up in their pin. But eventually, you'll need to take them out of their pin and set them up in a different environment, um, whether it be on the lawn, in the um, yard, wherever it may be, you need to make sure you're taking them out of their pin and setting them up as well. Um, for the first few times or however long it may take, um, it's a good idea to have another lamb out there with them makes them a little bit more comfortable, a little easier to work with and to train a little bit and ease them back. But eventually they will need to get to a point where they are comfortable being out there by themselves. Um, because we've seen shows, lots of different shows where there's just maybe one or one in the class. So they need to be able to be comfortable with that and comfortable with you as well. So that's why I do suggest practice setting them up um, on a daily basis. And I would also suggest you actually go through um, a uh, simulated show ring. So go through taking them, um, walking them out of the makeup ring, setting up the rear view. Um, you might have somebody help you go through that has somebody serve as the judge, um, go through the front view, walk them around, side view, placing. It really does help if you practice that show, um, that show ring flow. So if you don't have anybody that can show a sheep right next to you, um, even if you have somebody, a younger sibling or mom or dad that just wants to take another lamb out there with you while you're trying to get them used to being out there, um, that's a good idea as well. Just so they're, they're not alone sometimes until they get used to it. Because we don't usually like to leave our sheep alone or by themselves. They're not very comfortable with that. So they like to have other sheep around them. Okay. So the steps to setting up a sheep correctly, and again, we're gonna go through some pictures and some videos here. You always place the hind feet first. So once you pull in, once you walk that lamb into position, okay, you're gonna start by placing those hind feet first. You need to set the feet so that they are based on the four corners of the sheep, not too wide or not too narrow. Um, and those hind feet can't be placed directly underneath the lamb nor too far stretched out. 
So in order to know what that looks like, you're going to have to really practice and having somebody there to like help you um, realize when a sheep is set up correctly does help. So mom, dad, whomever um, is going to be helping you. Um, it also might help for them to maybe take a picture or a video of you doing it so that you can see um, what you're doing and what, how that lamb looks when you set up that certain way. Um, but once you know what a lamb looks like when it's set up correctly, uh, make sure you kind of take a snapshot um, where you are. So your viewpoint of the lamb is different from the judges or for anybody else. So you need to know if it's set up correctly by your viewpoint. Um, so make sure that you kind of practice that as well. So the front feet are next after you set up those hind feet, and those should be directly set underneath their shoulder there. Um, and then the bracing, which we will get into a little bit more towards the end, we're going to give you some more tips on, on trying to get that lamb to brace. Um, but bracing, you kind of use, you use that inner thigh, um, you put pressure on their chest, not, not their windpipe, okay? <laughs> Sometimes we get in the windpipe and they start coughing, right? Make sure you're putting pressure on that chest to encourage them, you know, you want them to shift that weight forward into that bracing position. And then that is how your lamp, your lamp should be set at that time. Okay, so let's look at some, a picture and some videos here. So the first position you're going to set up your lamp is that rear view position. So let's look at the feet placement of the lamb. So she, um, she's fairly wide right now. Um, she's acceptable. If I was being self-critical, I'd say she might be a touch wide um, how I have her set. Um, but she, you can see you don't want her to be too narrow either, but her feet um, are even with each other. Um, if you look at the head and neck, you can see the head and neck are coming straight out of that shoulder injunction there. You want it straight up and the ears forward and her nose is pointing forward, not up not down, but forward, okay? And she, it's hard to tell in this picture, but she is bracing. She has shifted her weight forward. Um, so that's kind of a picture of what a rear view setup might look like. And again, this is really one of the first looks a judge is going to see of your lamb that's when it's set up. Um, so this is kind of one of their first impressions of your sheep set up. So you wanna make sure that you get it set up in a timely manner. Um, you want to make sure that it's set and you're ready to go for whenever the judge chooses um, to come and feel those lambs. Okay, so the next video, and I will preface this just a little bit by saying this, the sheep is not show ready yet. We're working on her, um, but you'll kind of see that in the video, but, but she did a pretty good job for only having a few few times of, of working with her. So I'm gonna show you what it would simulate as far as I'm coming in from the makeup ring and I'm trying to pull her into the rear view. I struggle with pulling her into the rear view just a little bit, I give her a little nudge, but you're gonna kind of see, and there's no audio on this, so um, don't worry about if you can't hear anything, there is not any audio. You're gonna see how I get her set up. Okay, so you can kind of see, she, she didn't really want to walk too great for me at the end there, so I had to kind of tailor, and then I did nudge her just a little bit, because you want to make sure she's in line um, with the rest of the, the um, sheep I was practicing, big, you know, simulating that there's other sheep in that class, um, and then I set her hind feet first, um, and then I went to the kind of front, and you could see how I tried to get her to brace. Now, the judge did come up pretty quick on me here, so I didn't have a whole lot of time um, to get her set up, but that happens in a show ring sometimes. Um, if I was being critical of how I set her up, you can kind of tell that I've got her stretched out too far. Um, and some of you might notice it, might can see it, but you can see that there's a little bit of a dip right here in her loin edge. That's, we don't really wanna show that, right? We don't, we really don't wanna show that off to the judge. So what I would choose to do in this situation, you'll see it in the, in the next um, couple um, videos, is I would move the front feet back. That would be my preferred choice to get her from being too far stretched out. If you move those front feet back, it's a little bit easier to do that um, instead of maybe resetting her completely. 
because her hind feet are fine, it's just a little bit too far back. Um, also, when the judge comes up and feels your lamb, once in a while the lamb will shift their feet around for you. So it's good to check them again just to make sure that she didn't or he didn't um, move his feet around. And so you could you saw in the last part of that clip, I did have to readjust that front foot setting. So it's always good to check that as well. Okay. And the next um, kind of video and photo, we're going to talk about the front view because we do show off the front view in both our market and our breeding style sheep. Um, so the front view, you really need to make sure that the front feet are um, placed correctly. And hopefully, if you got the rear view correct, they should already be set when the judge comes around to see the front. But it's always good once you see that judge coming around to look down and check to make sure those front feet are um, right beneath the shoulder there, not too narrow, not too wide. Um, again, the head and neck are coming out fairly straight out of that shoulder joint. Um, and you want to make sure that the nose is forward, ears are forward. Um, so fairly decent um, position there. Sometimes a judge, especially in breeding, will come in and they'll check the teeth and they'll open up um, the two lips there and just kind of check the teeth. Um, and then your position, you want to be away from the lamb. You don't want to be standing right next to it um, because the whole point, the judge is looking at the composition of the lamb from the front. So you want to make sure you're standing away from the lamb. And then um, as the judge passes you, you shift and move over to the other side. Again, keeping that lamb or that animal between you and the judge. And as you're moving around the front of the lamb, make sure you're not moving too um, swiftly or quickly or in a way that might kind of frighten that lamb. Because again, um, these, you know, lambs are kind of have a tendency to, to be skittish at times. So making sure that you're not doing anything that creates even a little bit more um, confusion for them. Okay, so we're going to look at a little video of uh, when the judge comes around to the front and typically, um, you move, you start to move when the judge comes to that, kind of past that front shoulder. You're going to be able to recognize when that judge wants to see that front end of that lamb. Um, but again, I'm going to show you a little bit, a little clip here. Okay. So you could see um, how I moved around the lamb, made sure to keep uh, myself um, or the lamb between myself and the judge um, and also try to do it calmly so that sometimes when you get off the front of the lamb, they think it's their reason or their excuse to, to go ahead and move forward and, and to try to bolt on you. So make sure you're practicing that front view so that they know, no, that that's not the time to do that. Um, and again, still making sure that the head and neck are in place. Um, you can see she's starting to shift here on me too. And so that, that'll happen, that can happen um, once you get back into the lamb. Um, but once the judge kind of leaves that front shoulder area and starts going back, you need to get, be getting back into that lamb, embracing that lamb again, for, especially for our market sheep, okay? Because they have already looked at the front. Um, now they're, they're evaluating that lamb from kind of from the side in the rear view again. So make sure you get a good brace on that lamb. Okay. So after you have it in the front position, again, if we refer to our show ring diagram, you know that then they're going to start walking out. You're going to walk the lamb around the ring, and then you're going to end up in the side view position. Um, so we're going to, it's reiterating things. You might, I might sound like a broken record here, but you know, you really need to pay attention to that feet placement again when you're in the side view. And you can see it a little bit better here in the side view when I was talking about um, those rear legs, they're not too far underneath because that will cause that lamb to roach in its back. And we don't want that, okay? We don't want any lamb to have any roaching on the back. And too far out, it'll cause a break in their loin or a dip in their loin. So you wanna make sure you have that lamb um, stretched to the perfect, um, the perfect amount. And again, that takes practice to know that on each lamb where that may be. Um, but again, the feet placement are in line together. You don't want to have one foot in front or one foot in back. They need to be parallel here. Um, again, the front feet are coming straight down there from that shoulder. Um, not too narrow, not too wide. Um, you can see that she has she has shifted her, she's a little bit of shifted weight forward. So you can tell there's a little bit of brace going on. It's harder to tell sometimes in pictures here. Um, and then 
your style can be different on how you choose to brace. This is just happens to be my, my style. It might be dated a little bit here, um, but I like to kind of lean back a little bit after I get a good brace on it. Um, but I have seen some showmen that choose to do a kind of squat down a little bit lower um, and they like to have a to have braced kind of in the, when they're lower. Just a word of caution on that. I think that's fine, that's a great look, um, but make sure you're being conscientious of our other showmen in the ring. Sometimes our, our back leg here, if you choose to squat down and you kind of stick that leg out, make sure you're not invading other people's space um, or making being a good sport about that. But otherwise, it's a, a great look um, and a good way to show as well. You need to figure out your own personal style. What do you feel comfortable with? Um, and so that's part of showing as well. So we're going to look at walking out too in this next video in the side view. Um, so when you're walking the lamb out, you need to make sure that you give it enough space so that you're not standing right next to it and bumping into it as it's trying to walk. Um, also, your um, if you need to tail your lamb, you need to tail your lamb. But part of working with them, some lambs don't always want to, um, even though you've worked with them, don't always like to walk out. Uh, but um, please make sure you do some daily practice with your lamb practicing that um, as well. So she's not the best at this right now, but we're gonna give you an example here of walking out inside you. So she's not doing horrible there. You can tell she's not quite comfortable, but you wanna do a moderate pace. You don't want to be too slow, too, um, too fast. Again, she's a little, <laughs> you can see, not quite sure there. There we go. And then I got her pulled up into the position, move those rear feet front foot, okay, and then I'm going to try to get her to brace here, there we go, you can see that shift forward, that's what we're looking for, shifting that body weight, my judge tries to trick me here a little bit by moving, um, and that's a basic um, side view presentation, okay, all right, so let's talk about bracing. So it can be a struggle to get some lamps to brace. Some lamps are natural bracers, and those are the ones you hope for because um, they're just naturally inclined to brace. Um, so bracing does take daily practice. Um, so the basics of it is you putting, putting that pressure on their chest with your inner thigh. You, I like to slightly ease back once I feel that pressure back. So it kind of shifts that weight forward and then immediately apply that pressure again to maintain that brace. That way it feels like they're bracing um, and that's my, my procedure on how I get lambs to brace. Now, not all of them want to brace and maybe if you put, when you're working with them, they, when you try to brace them, they don't push back, right? They choose to back up instead. They're like, oh, I'm just going to back up if you keep pushing on me. So what we have done in the past is we have positioned that lamb so there's, there's no space for it to back up to. So what that could mean is um, we have positioned it, so we pull it up into the rear view, and when we place the hind feet in um, this right next to or right um, by a gate, um, so that there's nowhere for it to back up to, if that makes sense here. So you push the, the hind feet and the rump so that if you push into it, okay, and it tries to back up, it kind of um, backs up into the gate and it's, oh, there's a gate there or there's something there I can't back up and it shifts its weight again back forward. Um, so it's kind of teaching it, okay, there's nowhere for you to back up here. You need to shift your weight here forward. Now, use caution when you're doing that okay i'm not saying don't be too forceful here we're just trying to get it to recognize that there's something behind it um, and you need to shift your weight forward okay so just be careful when you're doing that um, another thing that sheep tend to do sometimes for us is they like to what we call side saddle so when you're trying to brace they might want to shift their uh, weight to a different side side or two and, and kind of step out on you um, so again that just takes practice and you know use your hand to slightly nudge it back into place if that still is it continues to happen doesn't work um, what I have suggested doing before is and you need a couple people to help you with this um, take your shearing rack take the head um, off of it get up there on there with your lamb um, get it set up do it like you would normally do it on the ground, like as, as if you're going to brace and push into it. Um, if it chooses to step to the side, um, that, that left foot or that right foot might step onto air. 
okay and it doesn't like that so it's going to shift it it's going to move its, its foot right back onto that stand and it won't maybe side saddle as much on you because it doesn't it doesn't want to step onto air and that's why you need people there standing there too because you don't want its foot on air for less than a second okay you need to be back on that stand you don't want to hurt yourself or your lamb here so that's why you have um, people standing around to get that lamb immediately back up on that stand but it does kind of teach them if I stepped one side or the other I might hit air and I don't like that that feeling that touch so um, that's another suggestion that you could possibly do if you're having some issues with getting a lamb to brace um, a couple of tips just giving them a signal to indicate bracing can help typically I like to do a little tap on their rump or even that tail head just a little bit if you can reach it I'm um, giving that just a little tap or squeeze because naturally that's where we um, tail our sheep to get them to go forward when we're walking so that's kind of their natural inclination if they feel a little tap or a little something on their tail head they're kind of shift forward a little bit that's what I prefer to do to give them that signal that I want them to be bracing um, one rule I, I hate seeing in the show ring, do not yank or pull on their head or neck to brace, okay? They're not going to respond to that well. Um, if, how, you know, if you have somebody pulling your head or neck up, you're going to want to shrink it back in, right? You don't want somebody pulling on your head or neck. So don't yank or pull on their head or neck. Um, it's not going to work in your favor. And then you might have trouble with sheep doing what I call the turtle, right? They're going to they're gonna try to get their head or head and neck closer to their bodies. They're going to kind of shrink it in, and they're going to try to get away from you. Um, so do not, do not, do not yank or pull on their head or neck to try to brace, or even when you're walking out. Um, sometimes that happens when they've stopped and you don't realize and you're going forward, but realize that immediately and, and then just tail them instead of pulling or yanking on their head or neck to brace. If you can tell... <laughs> It's a pet peeve of mine when I see that in the show ring, okay? So try not to do that if at all possible. Okay, and so kind of to wrap up here, um, learn to recognize when your sheep is set up correctly. I've said it before at the very beginning um, that you are the person showing that sheep. You are the one in the ring. You are the one that has practiced with it on a daily basis. Um, you really shouldn't be looking on the outside of that show ring for any other help. It's, it's up to you, right? You have confident in your abilities and your knowledge of your sheep. Um, you need to make sure, again, you're taking those snapshots in your mind of what my lamb looks like when it's correctly set up from my point of view. So make sure that you know that. That's very important for you to learn um, and learning, just learning to recognize when your sheep is set up correctly on your own. Okay, I believe in you. I think you can do it. It does take daily practice and some sheep um, just need a little bit of adjustments in different ways, but um, recognizing that or asking your fellow 4-H members um, that are older than you for some help and some guidance and tips. Um, you can never go wrong there or your, if you have project leaders in your county um, that are able to do that, it's, it's a good idea too to ask them some tips and tricks. We're all here to help you out. Um, so just be confident in your abilities. I know that you can do it. Um, and I wish you good luck with showing your sheep this year. Um, They're all different, so make sure you get to know them and, and have fun with it. It is supposed to be a fun experience, um, and it's, it's nice. It's, I always had fun getting out there in the show ring and, and being able to compete and, and do my best and show off the hard work that we put into our sheep. So have fun with it um, and enjoy your time as a sheep showman. So with that, I'm going to open it up for any questions that might have popped in that I can hopefully answer for you. I'm um, also saying thank you for tuning in. Um, so Jenny, do we have any questions that I can try to answer? We do. We had a question come in from Sean who asks, how old are the sheep that you show? Okay. So most sheep are going to be born in early January um, to, you know, mid-January. Some are late December. So t depending on when your county fair is, usually they're six months, seven months old, eight months old, as when they usually hit their market weight, which is around, you know, 130, 135, sometimes up to 140, 145 um, is typically the age and weight of your market sheep. And is that any different for breeding stock, Anna? Sure is, yeah. So breeding stock, you have your categories. Um, you do have your ewe lambs, which again, that's going to be the same as far as when they're born, but you do have yearling sheep. And so those are going to be a, about a year and a half old, right? So you have the option of showing yearling sheep as well. Great, thank you. And then I also had a question from Anita, which was how much weight should a sheep gain per day? <laughs> well, 
it's been a while for me to answer those showmanship questions because that would be a showmanship question how much did your sheep weigh and i would have to research reference that again it just depends um i would say about half pound um a day is, is would be my estimated guess at this point okay thank you we have another question uh, from Gracie who asks any tips on catching a sheep <laughs> um, yeah so catching a sheep I compare it to basketball a lot um, so you want to kind of if they're in a pen with other sheep you're gonna try to hurt them or even if they're not you're gonna try to you're gonna kind of get down low um, kind of almost like squatting position arms out um, to the sides um, and you're kind of try to hurt them into a corner area um, and then kind of you, it's hard to it's hard to verbalize here but um hurt them into more of a corner area um and then once you have them that place quickly go up and try to grab them right around um kind of around the neck or you can catch them by the rear flank as well um, but i always say get low <laughs> just kind of like basketball get in a low stance almost like a defensive stance um and, and try to come up on them that way don't not too quick of movements because the until you're ready to actually catch them at the end um, because they will sense that. All right, some great tips. We have another question that asks, what are some good ways to bond with your lamb? Sure, um, some good ways to bond with your lamb. Of course, um, we talk a lot about daily training and that in itself is the bonding technique that you have. Um, but you know, you should be the one out there feeding and watering that lamb every day, right? Um, so that's its own self bonding. Um, you can get in the pen with it if you would like to and kind of just watch it and kind of get it, get it comfortable with you and your scent, um, you know, catching it and getting it on the halter broke and, and walking it around as well. Um, you'll get a, a sense of its tendencies and it's kind of, sometimes they have attitudes, so, um, and it's attitude, but yeah, those are some, just some good ways to bond just daily training as well. Well, and this is kind of related. Uh, Avery wants to know what your sheep's names are. <laughs> um, well, the one and the, the pictures, the sissy, um, buddy, uh, and it was my nephew's sheep, so he let me borrow them, sissy and buddy, and I want to say it's beauty, but he might correct me. Um, I used to name my sheep after Disney characters. I'm sure people still do that to this day. My favorite, actually, sheep's name was Honey, so. That's pretty fun. Okay, I have a, a more serious question who, uh, would like to know some examples of questions asked during showmanship, particularly senior showmanship. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the question I got earlier about how much does your, your sheep gain in a day, that's, that's going to be a, probably a question if they choose to ask questions. Um, you know, the feeding is very important part of, of, of sheep production so that you might get some aspects of feeding questions. Um, you might get some questions about the sheep industry in general. Um, maybe what is a challenge facing the, I got, what is a challenge facing the sheep industry currently? Um, that tend to be a popular one that I usually had to answer. Um, you're going to need to know the parts of your lambs as well. Um, and and for seniors, they actually kind of ask some of your more um, retail meat cuts if you're showing market as well. So not just where is the loin on the sheep, but maybe where would the you know rack of lamb be on, on your sheep or or those type of meat questions too. Great, those are all great questions to know. Uh, so we have some positioning questions. Um, sounds like someone's wondering what if the lamb has its back kind of up and hunched, but it's still stretched out. What do we do about that? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that's um, on the structure, that's not necessarily a showmanship fault. It's more on the structure of your lamb. But what I have seen quite a few people do um, is they'll take their, their hand and kind of push it down, um, to push down the back. And that will level it out for a short time. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe if you see that judge is going to come around and look at you might want to push it down just a little bit, right? Um, but if you believe you have your feet set correctly and it's still roaching that top, just, you know, trying to push it down. And even on the walk a little bit too, it might, if it roaches that top, giving that, that top line a push down just a little bit, okay? So, but I mean, you, you're going to do your best to, to try to show off the best attributes of the lamb, but sometimes it is just a structural issue. Okay, we have a breed 
specific question, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this, Anna, um, but Jillian would like to know, do you need to brace Katahdin sheep? I didn't last year because it was a breeding ewe, but I also have a weather this year. So our Katahdins are our hair sheep, and so they're a little bit unique um, in their makeup. Uh, Katahdins are probably a little bit more difficult to brace. Um, so breeding and breeding in general, you don't maybe have quite of a strong as a brace on them. I would rec I would not, I would look into it a little bit more, but my immediate suggestion would be no, not necessarily as much of a brace on them. You still need to be at the front of the head and still in the correct position, um, especially if you have a weather, because a weather is still a market animal, correct? Um, so just making sure you have, you could probably have a little bit of a brace on them, but Totten's are a unique breed. Okay, we have a couple of um, hair related questions or wool related questions. So do you uh, leave the legs fluffy and how do you brush out fluffy leg hair without ripping it out or causing pain to the sheep? Sure. So yes, we like to see leg wool on our sheep. Um, and that is, honestly, that's a tr it's more of a trend. Um, and, and it has been a trend for quite a few years, so I don't see it going any place soon. So yes, we do leave leg wool on our sheep, and there are specific, um, cart, what I call like more of a carding brush that you can use for to get all that shaving out of the sheep, and it does not, it does not hurt them, uh, making sure you're not, you're not pulling too hard, right? Um, just like your own hair, you're not going to pull really too hard, um, using your judgment there. But um, there are different, um, you know, brushes and materials that you can use use to get that wool kind of fluffed out um, and, and comb correctly. So did I answer, hopefully I answered that correctly. Or I think so. We have okay. another question kind of related to care. Um, this question says, how often do you have to clean your sheep and how often do you clean their pens? Okay, um, it depends on your setup that you have, but as far as washing your sheep and shearing them out, um, you probably should have when I just you probably should have already got at least one shear on them already if you haven't um, if they are a, a lamb that you bought or you raised um, you don't want to have all that wool on them right now you probably of course you're going to slick shear if it is that type of lamb you're going to slick shear them either the morning or day before of a show um, but you need to be washing and of course you're washing them right before you shear them um, I would say what I'm thinking back to what we had our sheep. Um, we washed them in towards the, the summertime. It was usually about once or tw once a week or once every two weeks, just because we were shearing them out for to go to a show. Um, what was the second part of that question? Oh, your bedding. Your yes. Pen, how I often think? do we have to clean their pens? Mm -hmm. Often, <laughs> okay. Just like we don't want to sit around in in um, dirty pens or filth. I would say again. Um, you know, depending on the size of your pen and how many sheep you have in that pen, it can have a varying degree of um, dirtiness, let's say that. Um, I would suggest at least probably once a week, um, if not a little bit more. Dep it depends on your setup. Again, if you have them out in the pasture or if they're coming in and out of the barn, you just need to be able to judge it so they have fresh, clean bedding that they can lay on and sleep on and be comfortable and not getting very dirty. Um, but you can kind of judge that for yourself as well, depending on your pen setup that you have. Okay, we had another question come in um, during that answer. So this one says, do you need to fit breed stock once a year and then clip them to keep them that way? Or do you need to fit them more than once? So on your breeding stock, it depends on what breed you have. Each breed is going to be a little bit different because of because of how they, they grow their wool out and how um, how much they have. I would, I would recommend um, you researching it, your own breed and seeing what they recommend for that breed that you have. Um, for breeding stock that we have on our farm, um, we have we have kind of a variety of sheep, but they're mostly our meat sheep that are more like a Hamp or Suffolk type of sheep. And typically, um, if they're breeding stock that we're we're not we're not showing, right? Um, it's typically two to three times a year that we get them sheared out, um, if that helps you. But if it's for you know. A different breed. Again, look into that breed characteristics and breed care. Okay, thanks, Anna. Uh, we had a few questions that were kind of related about uh, getting your lamb used to a halter. So do you have any tips on that? Um, I laugh because it can be a struggle. Um, and again, 
it's it's one of those daily daily practices i i mean it it really is um you know having them tied up in the pen helps a little bit okay i'm used to the halter walking around your pen a little bit um so they're in a comfortable neutral kind of situation for them they're gonna fight your halter it's, it's just the, the nature of it um, and realizing that um they they get used to it. They'll get used to it probably. I mean, most of ours got used to it within a week. Um, so you've got to kind of be persistent and keep at it. They will, they might choose to do what I call the belly flop and belly roll. <laughs> Sometimes they just drop and they kind of roll around and you just, you have to have patience when you're dealing with sheep. You got to get them back up and get them going. Again, it helps to walk them in pairs or groups. They'll feel more comfortable that way. They are a herd animal. Um, but my tip really is being persistent and patient with those sheep when you're trying to rope halter them. Absolutely. Uh, we had a question about haltering a, sh a lamb before you show. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'm, I'm not, not sure exactly sure what, the, what question the question is. It was how, how many minutes do you need to halter a lamb before you show? Like, like you're trying to get it ready for show? And you, so you're putting your halter on and you're getting it out of the pen? It's a I'm, great I'm not question. sure what the question is asking. Well, Richards, if you want to uh, rephrase your question and send it again, we'll try that um, another way. Uh, another kind of halter related question is when I'm training my lamb, should I start with a rope halter or start with my hands? Um, you know, a rope halter would probably be easier on you, <laughs> personally. Um, a rope halter would be better to start with because um, you can train them as using the rope halter and then incorporate your hands. Um, you can still have the rope halter on them as you're leading them out with your hand. If you're talking about walking them out, rope halter. Um, do that first and then incorporate your hands and then as, like holding them with the halter on and then get that halter off eventually and then go just straight with your hands. Uh, well, that would be my suggestion. Okay, we have so many great questions, Anna. We could be here for a while. So I'm gonna draw everybody's attention um, to the chat box. You should see a link to that registration survey there. You should be able to copy and paste that into an internet browser and just let us know you were here. Um, if it's not working, just send me your name and your county and I'll make sure you get on the list. Um, you're not going to be able to click directly on the link, but just copy and paste that and it should come up for you. Um, so we'll continue with questions while you guys are taking care of that. So this is a very specific question. So if the sheep are in profile view and the judge walks down the line next to the lambs, do you step away and move your bracing leg away from its chest when the judge is on the opposite of the handler so the judge can view the front? No. Um, when the judge is walking down on the side, no, you want to have that brace on the lamb. You will notice um, a difference when the judge wants to see that front of the lamb. It'll, um, he or she will come and kind of stand in front of your lamb when you're in the side view there, and then you shift off of it. But you don't want to um, really leave that bracing position uh, unless you are really asked to. So no, I've seen that before in shows where um, they'll kind of step back off of it when they think the judge wants to see the front. Um, but the judge will make that clear when they want to see it. So keep on that bracing position and rotate as you need to with the judge. Okay. And then we have a question about feeding, which um, might be better answered by a veterinarian, but um, any tips on feeding? How much feed should you give them each day and how much hay? <laughs> would be better to um, probably ask um, either a feed specialist that has more knowledge base on that. Again, it's been a while since I've done this. Um, I can I can tell you that I know we usually give them like a hand, just a small handful of hay or cottonseed holder, something to keep their rumens going. Um, and typically, depending on where they're at in their market weight, uh, we typically give them about two pounds a day. Um, again, it depends on where they are developmentally. Um, but again, something you need to probably have a conversation with your feed specialist um, or parents, or if you are a parent, um, maybe contacting a 4-H um, project leader in your county too to give you a little bit more suggestions on that. Okay, and we had somebody who was inspired by the Katahdin question. So do you show Katahdin hair sheep the same way you show other sheep, other than the bracing thing, because we kind of talked about that already. 
So I am not a cantata expert. <laughs> I do not have a, a real good familiarity with the breed. Um, so I'll preface that really quickly. Um, but what I have seen when I have gone to different sheep shows is that, that yes, typically, you know, the basics are the same. You're going to set up the feet um, how you need to have them set up. Um, and the, you're going to, you know, of course, we kind of touched on that, that bracing issue. But, but in my opinion, yes. But again, it's a breed kind of question. And I'm not fam as familiar with Katahdin's here. Um, but you need to look into some of your breed characteristics and breed. Um, if you're, you know a breeder where you initially got that um, Katahdin from or your first Katahdin, that might be a good place to start too with some of those questions. All right, and then we have someone who wants to know what's your favorite breed of sheep. Um, my favorite breed of sheep is probably the suffix, just because um, that's what that's what I'm used to. Um, I want to go back to that feeding question though, real quick. Um, it's really probably more like four pounds a day. I'm sorry, I was thinking two pounds per feeding. Um, so I don't want to get misinformation out there. So more like four pounds a day. But, but going back to the breeds, my favorite breed is the suffix. All right. Well, thanks for that additional information about feeding and for just a little bit of fun facts about Anna. Um, all right. Another question we have. Uh, somebody's wondering about questions for intermediate showmanship. Do we want to get into that or just... Um, say they're similar to advanced? They are similar to advanced. It's going to be varying degrees of difficulty, and that's going to be across all levels of, of showmanship there. Okay. Uh, is it truly necessary for a lamb to wear a cover 24-7? What about when it's very hot? Sure. So those covers are meant to really keep the lamb clean, um, um, for us, as far as when we use them, it's after we shear them and we're going to a show or getting ready to exhibit them somewhere. Um, we want to keep them clean um, so we don't have to really wash them as thoroughly as we did before. If it is too hot, yeah, don't you don't have to put them on there. Um, it's, it's really up to you. It's really to keep them clean. And some people use it um, to help as far as keeping some of those flies off of them. But you should be using fly spray um, after you shear them as well. Um, so it's up to you. But that's what we've done in the past. And this is kind of related. How often do you check on your lambs uh, to see if they're hot? It depends on how hot it is that day. <laughs> okay. So use your judgment there. Um, if it's in the middle of July, it's 100 degree weather, you, you need to be out there. You know, you're going to be out there already in the morning, in the evening, um, checking on, you know, and feeding them. I would go if you're available to do this um, to go out at least a couple more times throughout the day you should have a big hopefully a big fan on them um, to keep them cool but don't be messing with them either when it's the middle of the day in the heat don't be daily don't be doing your practicing or training um, do, do that when it's the coolest part of the day as well um, so but definitely if it, especially if you know it's it's unbearably hot for you it's going to be hot for the lambs to so go out there and check them at least um, a couple times a day through um, in between your feeding times a great thing to think about. We definitely want to make sure our animals are comfortable. Um, so this is a question about um, goats and sheep together. So this family has goats and they're going to need to separate their buck when the baby goats are born. And they're wondering if their lambs would get along with this buck who they say is very sweet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question. We never had goats with our sheep, so I really can't answer that competently. I'm Might not sure how they would interact. There. <laughs> Might be. Um, if you choose to do that, just if you think he's sweet, that's that's a great, but tendency for a lot of our bucks is they like to be um, have a little bit more testosterone on them, so they'd like to be king of the hill. So use your judgment there. I can't really answer that competently, I don't think. I don't have experience in that. Okay, so we had um, somebody clarify their question about um, putting the halter on before they show. So now the question says, how many minutes before I show do I need to get my lamb out and put on its halter? Okay, so this goes back to um, the flow of the show as well. Um, how quickly are they going through your classes? Um, but I would say at least, I wanna say at least 
15 to 20 minutes before you expect to be in the show ring because um, you want to have them standing up ready to go. You want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time to, um, to get them all cleaned off and um, kind of maybe make some last minute adjustments that you need to do. And then that's very basic, you know, just at least 15 to 20 minutes, I would say. Um, just to make sure that you are ready to go because it might, your class might come up quicker than you actually think to. Okay. Um, any recommendations for showing Icelandics? Unfortunately not. I'm not familiar with that breed. Okay. No problem. Um, let's see. We had someone ask, is this video going to be made available to view later? And Byron, the answer is yes. We will post a recording um, on the at home activities website, which is purdue.ag uh, slash 4-H home activities. And we'll, um, you'll just find the recording right there. It'll be on YouTube. Um, let's see, how long do sheep live, Anna? Hey, um, if you're talking breeding stock uh, and talking your ewes, typically um, you can have them anywhere from six to eight to ten years uh, depending on their their production again you're you're raising production animals so that if if a ewe is not producing then typically that shortens the lifespan of the ewe um, with our our weathers that we take to market um, it's kind of what we've answered before as far as um, how old are they when they show you, you're really taking the market at show show weight some get there a little bit sooner than others um, so you're going to say between five six seven months old is when you usually um, get to that market weight okay let's see so how far in advance would you shear your sheep before the fair and what are some good resources where someone could learn how to do that? Um, hopefully this isn't the first shearing that the, the lamb has gotten. They really need to have a good, at least initial shear. If it's not sheared yet, I would go ahead and shear that lamb out. Um, so you don't want a, a really a lot of long wool on it um, to be the first um, shear that you give it. Um, and then for like a fair wise, as far as I typically, before a show, I usually do it at least a day or two before the show, usually more like a day or day of the show. Um, but if your lamb has a really long wool on it, it wouldn't hurt to do it a week before um, the fair, if the fair is the only show you're going to. Um, so now, do it now or within the next couple weeks here. Um, and again, probably, hmm, it wouldn't hurt to do it again in June. And then again, if depending on when your fair is, okay, um, maybe a week or two before the fair. And then the final touch is gonna be the, the day or two before your show is really gonna, you're gonna kind of shear it out and fit it to your specifications. Um, on how to's on how to shear a sheep, I know that there's, I'm sure, I don't have anything that comes to mind, um, but I know, I'm sure there are videos that you could watch. Um, I would look, if you're looking for videos, I would make sure it comes from um, somewhere like that has a .edu on it so that you know it's kind of valid. Um, a lot of times it's really helpful if you have somebody showing you at your home or um, once we get to the social distancing phase here, we still need to keep that in mind. Um, but if you have older 4-H members or project leaders that can help you um, on a hands-on learning aspect. Um, but I haven't really researched um, sharing videos. Um, it's not something that I've looked at before. So I can't answer that part really. No problem. Let's see, uh, we have a question from Avery who would like some recommendations on where to practice walking sheep. Um, so we've done it, um, it's typically on gravel somewhere like a driveway. Um, maybe if you don't, if you live out in the country and it's not a very busy country road, you could do it, but I wouldn't really necessarily suggest that. But um, if you have like a longer lane, you can walk up and down a lane somewhere. Um, you need some place where you can, if you live out, um, most times you have a, a, a space that you can walk at least a, a few times up and down a lane or an area. Um, that's where we, we typically just walk up and down our lane multiple times. Um, so that's what I would 
suggest. I don't know your particular setup to advise you any further, but that's what we've done. Right. Um, I think we've hit almost all of the questions. If I've missed your question, please do send it again. Um, but we are kind of winding down. Um, you'll also notice that Anna's uh, email address is there on the screen. So if we've missed your question, I'm sure she'd be happy to, um, to talk to you a little bit more about your specific question. Um, Avery wants to know, Anna, what kind of sheep you have? <laughs> we have a mixture of, we have some Hampshire sheep, we have some Suffolk sheep, and just some kind of some crossbreds as well. So. All right, very fun. Um, well, with that, I think we're going to close out. Keep in mind that we're doing this every Tuesday uh, through the month of June at three o'clock for different animal science subjects. And there are other uh, great opportunities from 4-H um, that you can find online as well. 